All right, so let's play with some Loopler. So, you know, there were a couple of questions recently and just want to put it into perspective, a couple of ideas and have a little bit of fun and maybe do a patch together involving a Loopler and my letter L is messing with me. Why are you messing with me? There you go. And I know I moved it through it a little fast there, but I just want to put this onto the screen. So I pulled up the loop common in, and if you wanted to do mono, you could. Say you got something coming in on just in one through like a tip sleeve kind of cable. So, you know, I'm just going to patch that in there, you know, like so. But I'm going to take advantage of a stereo situation here, so I'm just going to connect those two. And other modules, you would connect ins, you would connect outs. The loop loopler is a little bit different. You would basically be having ins and you could have outs. These outs could go out one, two, three, four, any any way you want, depending on your routing. But you got some options. And those options can be really fun. So case in point, I want to go to the letter T. We're going to put in time stretch. That's just a favorite module. So I'm going to put those left ins, right ins where they want to go. And we're just going to go out. Keep it a little bit simple here for now. And then if you notice, there's no dry through at this point unless you set it up inside the module itself. So we'll actually do that in, in a moment. But I have it going through the time stretch and we also left the loop extra MIDI right there for you. So there's a reason for that. So I just want to, okay, I got sound. So within Loopler, just to take it into this main screen here, I mean, I'm going to get the sequencer going for a second. So. by itself it just kind of overdubs something so yeah, I'm not saying that's amazing but just no extra foot switches and already getting something kind of granular so that's kind of fun and speaking of foot switches I just want to show how to put in two foot switches because this was also a question recently so foot switch A foot switch B that's just what we're going to show for now so all right so we got this loop extra MIDI here. And just to explain a little bit here, if you notice the foot switches for those who have been using them, but you see these dots here, these are a different color than that. So we need something that's gonna make it send to that yellow dot. And uh, surprise, it's gonna be something that's more like a CV to MIDI, just because of the way the situation is here. So it's a little bit different than we might do with other patches, other situations. And uh, Loki had pointed out, you're not going to connect the MIDI in to the loop extra MIDI because that could create some kind of like double messaging. And I've seen that happen. I, I don't know how to better explain it other than try not to do it for now. It's really just that, that simple. There's no need to go to it. So this CV to MIDI CC, we're going to take foot switch A. We're going to go value out. Oh, and before I forget, we're going to duplicate that. So we'll get you ready right there. Uh, but CV to MIDI CC. And now that is going to be able to speak to that. Boom. That's pretty cool. So foot switch A, we have it as uh, latching, 0 to 1. We'll leave it B for now. And the CV to MIDI CC, as you can see, it's channel 1, but CC number is 0. And for the other CV, to MIDI CC, the number two that's here. We're just gonna connect that. So here, we're gonna to wanna to put that to a different CC number. I would recommend CC one, you know, just to keep things simple right here, right now. And now here's the fun part. 
they connect into there. So these foot switches are going to do different things. So let's make both of these be momentary. I'm sorry, I apologize, I said that backwards. We're going to change them from momentary to latching. So foot switch A, already changed it, now foot switch B. And this is going to work in a similar fashion to MIDI Learn, except that it's within the loopler. It's within the Bebo. It's a little bit different than with an external controller, but you would do it a similar way. So from here, we're going to hit MIDI Learn. We're going to focus on foot switch A. Uh, let's let that be a record versus play. And we could select it for the specific loop or all loops. So let's do all loops for now. So it's going to go between record and it's going to go between play. And there you go. It'll record until you press it again to start playing. And now for foot switch B, if you recall, we did switch the MIDI CC message. And that's to avoid a conflict with the previous MIDI CC1 module. It would cause a conflict if they were both on zero, channel one. It just, it would basically be MIDI learn twi times two on two different switches. So now that we have that situated, we can do record and overdub, for instance. Or rather, I should say play and overdub. So MIDI learn, all loops. Boom. And it's really just that simple. That's all from internal signal sending. Uh, so those are going as such. And I happen to like a play and a pause. So if we wanted to do that, you know, it could have been different messages, different mini learns and so forth. And I'm going to show this in action just to show that it actually works. So here is the sequencer one more time. I stopped the sequencer. So I just kind of want to mess with that one extra step just because it's fun. So let's go LFO. Actually, no, I take that back. Let's do a step sequencer because that's actually a little bit more fun for me. I like doing those. So step sequencer. And uh, before we even get too far, I'd just like to point out again, global settings. We're going to change this to MIDI so that it just all synchronizes to the uh, overall MIDI clock. And we could quantize this. Let's do it at eighth notes. But what I also want to do here is go into the rate controls. And if I do the LFO the way that I'm hoping to do, I haven't actually done this till, till right now. So let's see what happens. I thought I pressed LFO. Could be my imagination. There we go. Where are you? Okay. So LFO to the loop extra MIDI. See, it doesn't actually want to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go again, CV to MIDI, and we're going to get that one. And that one we could put onto MIDI message number two, for instance, because we already have zero and one taken. So boom. All right. LFO to there. Connection made. And now there. Cool. So we're going to focus on on that for a second. The LFO is active. How do we adjust something like that? So let's see. And we just did. That's really, really fast. So we don't really want something like that cooking on the LFO. So let's take down the level. Yeah, let's see where we're at for a second. Uh, where are we? Okay.
and it looks like I needed it to be a positive LFO. But boom. Okay. And it actually makes sense now that I think about it because you can't really have a, a negative rate at this point. It seems like the rate would be zero and higher. So that actually makes sense. And just to test that logic right there, we're gonna test the LFO level. One extra step, we got it active right there. So if we go in here, yeah, exactly. We've affected the range of the LFO. So now we might actually have some kind of pitch warble. So let's go back into commands. Let's play the loop. I mean, that's, that's fun. That's a start. Uh, keep in mind, we could have the same LFO rate now going to something in the time stretch because why not synchronize? Oh, sure, screw it. Let's do the pitch. Let's go to the circus tonight. Let's see what we can get out of you. So, there you go. That's kind of cool. Have fun. <laughs>